Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, welcome. Good to see you. Uh, good morning to everyone who's joining us online. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Okay, I hope you all are doing well. Uh, see you, thanks. Okay, um, so let's uh, continue from where we left off in the last session. Uh, we looked at some of the basis for ministering and healing and deliverance, isn't it? Some of the basis for ministering and healing and deliverance. Um, it's very quickly. I want. Let me check if uh, am I audible to everyone online. Uh, is the audio clear? Okay, great. Oh, a resounding yes. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, we looked at some of the basis for ministering, healing, and deliverance. Uh, basis is what, like the basics, the fundamentals. Uh, what are some of the things that you need to remember? Uh, while you're ministering healing and deliverance, right? So what's the first basis for ministering healing and deliverance? What's the first basis? God's nature, yeah, thank you very much. God's nature, second one. The cross, and in that cross, in that section, uh, we have the cross of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. Thank you. Okay, and what else? What's the next basis? The word. Pastor, the name of Jesus. The word of God, the, the name of Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit's power. Okay. What else? Faith. Kingdom of God, and the last one is commission. Okay, uh, all of those points are from your notes. Everything. So that that's what we discussed in the last class. Is um, all these different bases for ministering, healing, and deliverance. Okay, um, this is something that we need to keep in mind. I once again want to re-emphasize that these are the bases. In other words, it's basics. Like. Right? Uh, if if our basics is not strong, you can't build on it. Like if your foundation, if we all understand the importance of foundation, yes or no? Yes, no, maybe. Okay. Um, we all understand the basic, uh, the importance of foundation, isn't it? So when we say that the basis for ministering healing and deliverance, if you have a heart. To minister healing and deliverance, pray for the sick, uh, heal the sick, etc., etc. Um, these are the fundamentals that you need to remember. That we, you, first, you need to understand the nature of God, right, and what His Word has to say about ministering and healing and deliverance. Uh, you know, we have the name of Jesus, the cross, the power of the cross, the blood of Jesus Christ, right. The Holy Spirit's power has been given to us, uh, and the kingdom of God, uh, and then finally, it's the commission, right? Commission is two different words, co-mission, right? We use words like co-partner, isn't it? Co-founder, I am the co-founder of this company, yes, yeah. Uh, so that way, commission is two different words, it's co-mission. That means we are co-partners in this mission of God. Okay, so these are all the different um, bases we saw uh, of ministering, healing, and deliverance. Um, let's continue. Um, we will go into ad addressing a few uh, fundamental questions again uh, in this session. Basic questions uh, that you know people tend to have regarding healing and deliverance. Um, Classic question, is it God's will to heal everyone? Okay, fantastic, let's move on. Okay, so there, that doesn't have to be, uh, you don't have to have any doubt that if it is heal everyone, 
or not. So that's again the basic, the fundamental uh, truth that has to be super strong in our hearts. Okay. So one more time, is it God's will to heal everyone? Okay. Is it God's will to heal everyone? Okay. Thank you. Absolutely right. It is. It is God's will to heal everyone. Right uh, now, we come in the Bible. We come across difficult passages, like in today's mentoring. Ah, uh, Pastor Jay Kumar spoke on suffering. Uh, right, uh, Job suffered. Uh, why do we have to go through suffering? There are so many scriptures, the difficult passages to understand. Why did they have to go through this? Why did they have to go through that? Etc. Etc. Right, but a, a response. To those difficult passages is very simple. If you don't understand the difficult passages, but if you understand Jesus, uh, it, that is more than enough. Why? Because God's best, God's absolute best, is seen through His Son, Jesus. Okay? God's absolute best is seen through His Son, Jesus. Are you with me? Okay. The, we, the, uh, it sounds so simple. It sounds uh, so basic, but uh, that that is so important. Like that, understanding the truth is key for us to ministering, and not just minister. But there was there is a chapter uh, in in the later on in the subject where that truth has to be so strong in you to even receive healing and deliverance. It's not just about ministering healing and deliverance, but it's also about receiving healing and deliverance, right? So if Akil is ministering to me, uh, then I also need to, the one who's receiving prayer, healing and deliverance, uh, I need to you know, know for sure that it is the will of Jesus to heal me. Because God's best is seen in, the, in His Son, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1 uh, says He is the expressed image of, of the Father, right? Of the glory of God. Are you all with me? Okay, but uh, let's look at a uh, few scriptures, a lot of scriptures, um, which is going to help us understand uh, this uh, even better. Okay. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 24. I'm reading from your notebooks, uh, page 56 in your PDFs. And uh, yeah. I don't know which page number it is in your hard copies, but it's different. Okay, for me it's 84 and 85, but okay. So Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 and 24 says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Okay, healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptic and paralytic, and he healed them all. Okay, um, this... This passage of scripture is not often shared as a memory verse, but I present to you that uh, please memorize this passage of scripture. Okay, um, Matthew chapter eight verse sixteen. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. Matthew twelve verse fifteen. And when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Mark chapter 6, verse 56, Wherever he entered into villages, cities, or the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him, were made well. Luke chapter 4 verse 40, when the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with the various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. 
Are you with me? Are you following? In Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 to 3, uh, talks about the leper, right? It says in verse 1, When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put, on, put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Okay, there are so many things that's happening in the chapter. Now, uh, if you read through Matthew chapter 8, there are different scenarios where Jesus ministers healing and deliverance. It starts with this person who was healed from leprosy. And then later on in the chapter, you see a person is raised uh, down from the roof and you know Jesus heals them. Um, so Matthew chapter 8 is another very important chapter uh, about Jesus' ministering of healing and deliverance that we need to read. Okay, so let's look at that. Now, we'll... In the previous page, we read five scripture passages, right? From Matthew chapter 4, Matthew 8, Matthew 12, Mark 6, Luke chapter 4. Uh, what did you understand from those chapters? Sorry, okay. It was not like most or some of them. It was like all. That's something consistent that you see. Yeah, he was there for all. He healed. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Shani, I see you raised your hand. Oh, yeah. That's not going to say that he healed everybody. Uh, I'm not sorry. Can you say that again? Is... Oh, I was just, I'm oh, sorry. I was just going to say that he healed them all. He healed everybody in all those, in all those chapters. Okay. Sorry, Shani, just give us one moment, please. Uh, I'm not sure if something's wrong with the... Okay, uh, Shani, do you mind uh, speaking again, please? Yeah, I was just going to say that in those chapters, um, he healed them all. He healed everybody. Yes, yeah. Yeah, he healed everybody, yeah. There's not a single time where you see Jesus said, or he responds by saying, uh, I'm too tired. I'm sure he was, because he was also human. Uh, when the Bible says multitudes came, uh, I, I, we don't know the number. What is multitude? <laughs> right. Um, last year, I went to, on a mission trip to uh, um, Baloda Bazaar in Chhattisgarh. We have one of our churches there, an outreach church there, and uh, I went alone. And, uh, so, and you know, mission trips are kind of packed, one after the other, one after the other. And uh, oh man, the in one prayer meeting, there were more than 50 people, more than 50 people, and uh, and all of them wanted prayer. All, and by the end of the 50th person, I was uh, I almost wanted to faint. <laughs> you know, I was very tired because see, it's not just one thing. It's not just energy, physical energy that you know we can play football and you know you'll have energy. But the thing is, there's a spiritual element to it, isn't it? You're, there's a spiritual element to it. There's a, it's a spiritual warfare. You're going against the principalities and the powers of darkness when you are ministering healing and deliverance. And so it's not just, uh, and I also tell the worship team members and worship leaders especially, is, uh, you know, if you're feeling tired after leading worship, you know, at the end of the service, second service, you know, uh, at APC Central, um, it's not just physical tiredness. You're there upon stage declaring, proclaiming that Jesus' name above every every other name. Right? He is holy. He is good. He is wonderful. He is magnificent. And all of that, in a way, is waging a war against the principalities. And, and that will take a toll on us. Are you with me? Um, but here, 
what I'm trying to say is it, it is very tiring. And I'm, I'm sure Jesus, uh, you know, fully God, he was fully man as well. So we see that he got hungry, he slept, he was tired. And so it must have been tiring for Jesus. It would have been. But he never said, okay, go back, <laughs> come back tomorrow. He never said that. It, or at least doesn't record in the scriptures. right? To everyone who came to him, he healed them all. He delivered them all. Isn't that wonderful? Right? Matthew, Mark chapter 6, one of the scriptures that we read, um, it says, when he entered into villages, cities, and the, all the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces. They laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment. That they might touch the hem of his garment. Where, where, where else is that word, those words used? The hem of his garment. Yeah, the, the lady who, who was suffering for 12 years with the issue of blood, right? And so that's recorded previously. And so the news of that instant passed, spread to the other cities. It's like, hey, there was this lady in the other village in another town where she touched the hem of his garment and she was healed. I'm sure it will happen again to us. You see the faith? You see, right? It's see one of the words of meaning for the word testimony. Okay, one of the meaning for the word testimony it simply means to do it again. Right? Another meaning for the word testimony is simply means to do it again. That means when we testify. Of what Jesus did, okay. So when uh, you know Joseph comes here and says, like you know, I I had this thing, Jesus healed me. What is he doing? He's testifying, isn't it? And while he's testifying, there's so much of power because he's sharing about Jesus. And while he's testifying, there's an atmosphere that's being created for Jesus to do that miracle one more time. Are you with me? I hope you really got that, okay. But uh, very quickly, let's look at this scripture from Malachi, chapter 4, verse 2. Malachi, chapter 4, verse 2, it says, But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings, you shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. The sun shall rise, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. Now, why did I bother reading that scripture from the Gospels? Like it seems no connection. Okay, so in their culture, right, when men, uh, you know, their attire, on, uh, they will have like, oh, uh, what we call it, I can use the word, uh, what is this, like a dupatta kind of thing, right? Yeah, so um, it's not exactly dupatta, but they, they would wear it around their waist and it would go down, go down to their feet, okay? And that, in their language, in their culture, was considered as wings. You understand where this is going? So in their culture, the way, what, that, that piece of cloth which would hang down from their waist, which was used to tie thing, was considered or called as a wing. So this woman who wanted to touch the, who touched the hem of his garment should have known the scriptures really well that, hey, the, the word of God says, the son of righteousness will rise on, e, you know, uh, with wing, uh, healing in his wings. So what is, what is that referring to is that piece of cloth that was actually hanging down. So let me just touch that piece of cloth, the hem of his garment. Are you with me? So this is just a little cultural context for us to understand uh, what that is and what it already had said in, um, in, in Malachi. Okay, let's move on. Uh, are you all with me? Alive? Yes? Okay, good. All 
Right. So uh, again, looking at Matthew chapter eight, verse one to three, uh, it talks about you know the leper. When Jesus comes down from the mountain, great multitude followed him, and behold, a leper came down and worshipped him, saying, "Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean." Look at the progression of that statement. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. He's not talking. So, okay, please pay attention. He's not questioning the ability of God. He's not saying, if you can heal me, heal me. Can I say that again? He is not saying, if you can heal me, heal me. No. He's coming to Jesus knowing that Jesus can heal him. He's not questioning the ability of Jesus or the authority of Jesus. But he's coming to Jesus saying, Lord, I know you can heal me, but if you are willing, heal me. Isn't that wonderful? And then Jesus says, I am willing. Be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now we can talk about uh, why, why, why is there words like cleansed used instead of healing for leprosy? Because leprosy was uh, originally a curse. It was not a disease. The first time leprosy is recorded in the Bible is in Numbers 12 where uh, Moses is... Um, brother and sister Aaron and Miriam comes before the Lord uh, when they had complained against Moses and you know you should read that chapter but that's where it's first recorded um, and so it was really a judgment of God and so there was no healing for it they had to be cleansed okay but that like I said it's a very different topic altogether we will not get into that today okay all right um, Let's move on. So why do we continue to minister uh, healing and deliverance for everyone? Is because the second point is the cross is for everyone. The cross is for everyone. Let's look at 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. I'll post this in the, in the chat section, just in case. It says, He is the propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Okay? And 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, Let's look at another scripture. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. So it says, Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Okay? Uh, I'm reading from the ESV, other translations will uh, sound different. But the reason Jesus came was to destroy the works of the devil. And one of the ways how we did that is through the cross. Okay, so it says, uh, he, he is, in other words, what we, what we will call it as a substitutionary sacrifice. He is the propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Okay, so that point is that point is just to reiterate that the cross is for everyone, right? Healing and deliverance are not only for Christians, right? Um, but the cross is for everyone, and that's why we minister healing and deliverance for everyone. Are you with me? Okay, so now let's look at another uh, important point. God's promise of salvation is for everyone. God's promise of salvation is for everyone. The promise of the gift of salvation is for everyone. Um, the Greek word for salvation is sozo. Okay, I'm just uh, reading from your notes. 
S O Z O. Sozo. Okay. So sozo is a Greek word found more than 110 times and is the most commonly used Greek word for salvation in the New Testament. Okay, the Greek word sozo is used at least 110 times in the New Testament. And then it goes on to say in the notes, sozo is a verb, an action word, something that is done, something that happens because of a work of God. Okay, it's a verb. A verb is what? An action, when you're doing something, isn't it? That's what it's considered to be, a verb. So what is the Greek word for salvation? Sozo, okay? Uh, please remember that. Now, this word, this four-letter word called sozo is packed. It's, it's packed with so many other uh, meaning to it, okay? And that's what we're going to look at. So the same word sozo is translated as forgiveness, healed, preserved, and depending on the context. Okay, so it goes on to say, sozo means forgiveness of sins. Okay, please feel free to highlight those sections in your uh, in your textbooks. Um, the reason I'm going through um, from your notes is so that you'll be able to just highlight them in your notes. Okay. So when we think of salvation, most of the time we only think of praying a sinner's prayer, right? Um, Jesus, I, I, I make you the Lord and Savior of my life. Come into my uh, heart. I give you my life, etc., etc., etc. Right? And uh, but that's all we believe there is to salvation. But there's so much more uh, to it. So sozo means forgiveness of sins. Uh, sozo also means physical healing. It means deliverance from demonic powers. There's a scripture passages for all of those points, and I want you to refer to it when you can. Okay, so sozo means forgiveness of sins. It means physical healing. It means deliverance from demonic powers. It means rescue and preservation from danger. Have you thought of salvation like that? Okay, uh, I didn't until I came across this word. I didn't know that this is what salvation meant, but. There's so many things to it, right? Salvation is for everyone, Matthew 18, 11. Um, Sozo is received by grace through faith. And sozo happens when you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Okay, uh, what does Romans 10, 9 and 10 say? Exactly what we just read, Romans chapter 10. Verse 9 and 10. Let's look at that. It says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay. Uh, last week there was a sermon that we preached, uh, that, was, that was preached at uh, church about uh, the, the importance of declaring the word of God or the spoken word. Right? If you uh, so, verse nine says, "If you confess with your mouth, that means if you declare with your mouth and believe in your heart, for you to meditate on it, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved." Verse ten: For with heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. With the heart one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. So what does justification mean? Justice? Just as if you have not sinned. Right, OK. What else? Justice, justified. So you've been falsely accused. Yes, uh, Shani, go ahead. Is it you've been made right? I don't know if that makes yeah. sense. So, if you have to give, let's say, try giving a proper definition to it, justification or justified, it simply means a change in legal status. Right? A change in your legal 
status. Okay, that means so you were falsely accused for murder. Right, that means you are a murderer now. You've been labeled as a murderer, but then you hire a lawyer to fight fight your case, and then going through the evidences and proof and eyewitnesses and whatnot. Uh, you've said you you've been proven innocent. So that what has happened? You've gone from the state of being sinful or a murderer. You've legally become an innocent. That means you've been justified. Justice has been served, as they say, isn't it? Yes or no? So that's what salvation, a part of salvation, it simply means that you have been justified. That means you, we were once sinners. We are no longer sinners. Are you with me? Right? Uh, you deserved death. We deserve death. But because of what Jesus did, we are no longer. Right? And so that's what Romans is, uh, is emphasizing in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Okay, is if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, God raised him from the dead, remember that words, okay, you will be saved. With the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Now let's read one more scripture from the book of Romans, Romans chapter 4, verse 25. The last verse of that chapter, chapter 4. Okay, uh, again, I'm reading from the ESV. Uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 25 says, Who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification? And raised for our justification. Uh, the New King James Version uh, says it very nicely. It says that he was raised, Jesus was raised from the dead after we were justified. Are you with me? Okay. Uh, guys, I just want us to understand the power of salvation. Okay. So, so, in that we see, you know, most of the Christians believe that we have been forgiven of our sins. Yeah. Do you believe that? Most of them, every, you know, uh, let's say 90, 95% believe that we've been forgiven. Right. Uh, if you ask why Jesus came to earth, you would say, okay, he came to die on the cross to forgive our sins, to forgive our sins, to forgive my sin, to forgive my sin, to forgive my sin. While we believe that we have been forgiven, we miss the point of understanding that we have not just been forgiven, but we have also been given. Right? We have been forgiven from our sins, and iniquities, but we have also been given his righteousness. We miss that a lot. We we easily oversee that okay, you know, we only we we believe that we've been forgiven hundred percent. Yes, Pastor. You know, uh, but we miss the point that he's also given us his righteousness and he's given us uh, you know his authority, his his word, his name, he gave to us, isn't it? Like in the basis of healing and deliverance he said we have his word we have his name right we've been given the holy spirit we missed the mark of what we've been given and we only focus on that we have been forgiven which is important right but we don't have to stay there we have to also look at what we've been given right so one more time just to quickly go through uh, the gift of salvation sozo means plus one Forgiveness of sins it also means physical healing. It also means delivered from demonic powers. It means rescue, preservation from danger. Sozo is for everyone. Sozo is received by grace through faith. And sozo happens when you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Okay, So that means everything else also happens if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Right? You need physical healing. You believe in your heart. Jesus is my Jehovah Rapha. He's my healer. And so in the name of Jesus, I confess, I declare, I proclaim that I am healed. Right? 
So if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, it's not just for salvation prayer. But when you say salvation prayer, all of this is included. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, and so when you look at... Um, so as a pastor, or, you know, let's say, let's assume all of us here in this classroom here and all those online are pastors, right? Um, now, if someone came to you and said, uh, Pastor, Pastor so-and-so, Pastor Anusha, Cyril, Shani, Warren, uh, say someone comes to you and says, uh, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Right? Someone comes up to you guys and say, um, you know, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. I say, I come to you and I say, <laughs> I want to give my life to Jesus. What will your response be? No, no, go today, come tomorrow. Huh. Yeah. What will it be? What will your response be to me, guys? I'm making, you're beginning to make me feel very bad now. <laughs> You're in more of a position of, you know, you're, you're happy, the instinctive uh, reaction, and you pray. You would definitely use the salvation prayer, and you... Uh, right, so you will be happy to lead me in, in prayer and in the process of giving my life mm, to Jesus? Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. So now we understand that's what salvation is, isn't it? Uh, should that change when someone comes to you for healing? Should your response change? No. Is it right? We will never respond to anyone who comes to for healing, saying, "Okay, uh, you know, today is not the right time. You know, I think the sun is a little bit off on the, you know, forty-five degrees off. Uh, it's, I don't think it's the right sign. Uh, it's full moon day today. You know, it might turn red in color. So I don't think today is the right time. Why don't you go and sleep over it and come back tomorrow? We don't respond like that. We shouldn't. I hope not. <laughs> right? We minister." healing and deliverance uh, to anyone who comes to us, just like we would lead them to Christ in a salvation prayer. Isn't it? Jesus did not do that to anyone. He's our standard, guys. Jesus is our standard. Are you with me? Yes, we do everything what he did. We are called to do that. We are called to commission, co-mission, co-partner. That is a privilege. Isn't it? Right? To say that I am a co-partner. And you know who my co-partner is? Jesus. If that doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. <laughs> okay. And so having understood all of this, we go to the next important question. Uh, is it right to pray, if it be thy will, when ministering healing and deliverance? If it is your will, Lord, please heal this person. We've kind of addressed this question. Uh, but, you know, just to move on. Is it is it right to pray or make a statement uh, saying, okay, Lord, if it is your will, please heal this person? No. Oh. Yeah. Because we, it's very clearly established in chapter 1 and chapter 2, okay, it's, we've established very well that it is the will of God to heal everyone. Why? Because the cross is for everyone. right? His blood was for everyone. Yes or no? And so it, it's really pointless for us to pray saying, Lord, if it is your will, heal this person. No. We know, we minister healing and deliverance from a place knowing that it is the will of God, our Father, to minister healing and deliverance, to set this person free. And so we don't have to make those statements when you pray. Understood? I hope there is no doubt about it. Uh, we, we're not even going to have a debate about it, okay? <laughs> yes, no? Understood. In Hindi, what is it? Samaj mein aaya? Correct. No. 
Okay, um, let's look at another section of it. Are you all learning something today? Okay, thank you. Yes, that's it. Do you, would you like to use the mic, please, for the benefit of everybody online? So, where can we, where can we use, uh, use this word if it's your will? We, we, we don't have to use the word if. Um, how did Jesus teach us to pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. If it is your will, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. No, he didn't teach us, right? He says, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. It, so it, that uh, the Lord's prayer is, is key, isn't it? Um, it's not the Lord's prayer, it's the sinner's prayer. Jesus is teaching us to pray. The first half of that prayer is what? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Right? That is an address. It's a you know we are addressing our God, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name. That means let your name be holy. That's what hallowed is. Let your name be glorified. We hallow your name. That's and then from the address we think that the second half is also address. It's not an address. It's a petition. Right? It is like an intercession. It's a prayer request. That's what we call it as a petition, isn't it? So first part is we are addressing God. Like, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Right? And so his will is perfectly displayed in, in Jesus. And it is also displayed in his kingdom. Right? Again, why? Because kingdom is two different words. Right? King and dominion so when the king comes he always comes with his dominion isn't it and in his kingdom there is no shame there is no tear there is no pain there is no sorrow that's what revelation talks about isn't it uh, and so it is god's will it's established from the beginning till the end that you know he wants his children to be awesome are you with me yeah okay um uh, another like a a subtle point in that prayer, it's not a subtle point, but uh, Jesus says, hallowed be your name and let your kingdom come, right? Uh, praise and worship is so important and how we honor his name and how we revel his name is so important because where his name is not hallowed, his kingdom will not come. Okay, where his name is not honored as holy, his kingdom will not come. His kingdom will come where his name is hallowed and honored and worshipped as holy. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, let's move on uh, very quickly. Since God is sovereign, won't he just heal people and if and when he wants to? This is a very important question, right? Since God is sovereign, won't he just heal people if and when he wants to? Okay, this is a huge uh, section that we want to take it slowly, um, but we are almost uh, coming to the end of the session one so you know what we we kind of pause a little early so that we don't have to you know uh, break the flow okay so we'll pause here this session and we will uh, resume in the next class after the break okay All right have a good break enjoy <laughs>